What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here. Welcome to Final Thoughts, my video series where I point out the pros and cons of a brand new video game title so you can decide for yourself if it's right for you. In this episode, I just spent six hours with part one of a brand new video game called The Raven, a point and click whodunit game that just came out about three days ago on Steam. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, as the advertising, as well as the webisode they published on their website, really piqued my interest. In this series, you never have to wait for my opinion. In this case, Chapter 1 of The Raven, aka The Eye of the Sphinx, was fantastic, and I am eagerly awaiting the release of the second chapter later this summer. In fact, this game ends with a behemoth of a cliffhanger that has left me salivating and anxious, but in a good way. Uh, but is it right for you? Well, let's find out. To begin, upon completion, The Raven will be a three-part point-and-click title that embroils you deep in the lives of people intimately involved in the investigation and capture of a world-renowned jewel thief known simply as The Raven. Sometime before the events of the game, The Raven was being investigated by a French inspector known as Nicolas Legrand, an investigation that concluded when Legrand shot The Raven while chasing him through Paris. For this, Legrand received international acclaim, yet never felt comfortable with the way things ended, even as he climbed the ranks of Interpol. Now, the world is once again fixated on the criminal underworld as a copycat criminal has stolen a priceless jewel from the British Museum. In this episode, you play as a Swiss constable who is assigned to help guard a train bound for Venice. In the wake of this Raven-esque copycat crime, the famed Nicolas Legrand himself guards a second and equally valuable gemstone as it is being transported aboard your train for a special exhibition in a museum in Egypt. The game was developed by King Art and distributed by Nordic Games. I haven't played any of their other titles, but King did publish a similar game to this one called The Critter Chronicles. Uh, so just in case you happen to have played that, same group. If you're not into cutscenes and or storyline and or characters, then this game is not for you. Some of the cutscenes run several minutes, but they're never preachy or overly full of exposition. So let's get into pros and cons. First, we're going to start off with what I enjoyed, which was most of this game. Uh, to start, the musical score in this game is wonderful. All right, At no time did I find it annoying. And The Raven is one of the few games I have ever played where I didn't turn down the volume of the background music. Adding to that, the voiceover work was flawless. All right? Everyone was absolutely believable and well cast for their parts. Aces across the board. The Diary, which is a useful tool in most point and click adventure games, is well designed and full of good details and no spoilers. All right? Um, a pet peeve of mine in point-and-click games is when hotspots remain active even after their usefulness has come to an end. In this case, all the hotspots disappear after you're finished with them. So, kudos for that. There's a very quick mini-tutorial at the beginning of the game. However, you can skip it if you so choose. Um, so, plus for being fast and plus for being skippable. The game is chock full of suspects and the needle of suspicion shifts back and forth between them quite often. This makes the game even more consuming as you find yourself regretting your earlier suspicions only to acquire them again within the hour. The game has a touch of humor but is mostly very sexy and very suspenseful. Your job is to help solve a crime, um, after all you're a constable. So the puzzles don't ever really feel gamey or artificial. They blend really well into the storyline. There are a handful of mini games that break up the point and click nature of the game, uh, some of which are very unique and creative. Um, graphically, it's a mixed bag. Uh, some sprites and models were designed better than others. But what I can say is that atmospherically speaking, the game looks gorgeous. There are reflections in glass and in hardwood floors. Um, the ocean looks real, and there are a lot of nuanced touches in the close-ups. Like, for instance, um, there are scratches on the inspector's desk and things like that that really add to the game. And uh, this episode ends with a cliffhanger of epic proportions. 
I was so astounded that by the time I remembered to pick my jaw up off the floor, my mouth had run out of spit. At first, I was actually surprised because of how short it seemed, but I had to remind myself that this was part one of a triad of games. Uh, this chapter lasted me six hours, meaning that the game as a whole should be in the neighborhood of 18 hours. So, in my humble opinion, I think it's worth the investment. So let's talk about cons. There are only a few things that kind of bugged me. Um, the first of which was there are times in the game where the voices in the animation don't sync up. Occasionally, a character will say something to the effect of there's no one in there and then open the door to see if there's anybody in there. There are also times where he'll do a pre-scripted double take, but because you've been clicking on the dialogue to kind of move things along because you can read faster than they can speak, the, you know, the double take is just kind of out there for no reason. Um, all of this is rare, but when it does happen, you notice it. So, yeah, there's that. Moving about can be a little complicated, depending upon how cramped the quarters are. Um, also, once in motion, you can't change direction until your character lands on a spot. This can be annoying at times, but, yeah, it's a thing. So, when I first got this game, it had some game-crashing glitches that revolved around clicking on things while walking. However, earlier today, there was a patch, and immediately afterwards, I went back and I tested those same spots and found all of them to be fixed. So, while I think it's important to mention, the game is fully playable now. So, you know, but just to be safe, make sure that you save your game after any major developments or any particularly lengthy interrogations so you don't lose anything. At the end of the episode, you'll receive a score, um, which seems to have no bearing at all on anything, and looks like it was added as an afterthought. The only way it could be valuable is if it included not only how many secrets you did find, but also how many secrets you didn't find. Sadly, it doesn't, so it just it's a seemingly arbitrary number. Finally, I did notice at the end that um, I started flipping through the extra section and under the soundtrack, one of the songs that came with the game, you know, that you listen to while you're playing the game, uh, when I clicked on it, it didn't actually play. So, you know, it's another bug that's just kind of out there. So, final thoughts. While some fans of point-and-click adventure games may cringe at the linear and less than creative puzzles of an offering that sits on the border between game and interactive movie, without question, the storyline, plot, characters, and settings make this a must-play title for those of you who enjoy whodunit mysteries. I fully plan to play the other two, and we'll do videos for them accordingly when they come out. The second episode, Ancestry of Lies, is scheduled for Tuesday, August the 27th, 2013. And the third, A Murder of Ravens, um, will be out uh, at the end of September. I'm also considering doing a full spoiler review after I've played all three. Um, so we'll see how that works out. But should you buy this title? Well, only you can decide that, and hopefully this video helps. However, let me leave you with this. From now until next Tuesday, which is July the 30th, 2013, this game is on sale on Steam at 10% off. And like I said earlier, after the update this morning, it appears as if all the bugs have been worked out. So, you know, just a little bee in your bonnet. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, leave them in the comments below, and I will answer what I can. In the meantime, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please click the like button or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I will see you next time.